The menu system is accessed by using the menu button and jog wheel on the bottom of the camera, or you can just press the LCD screen and touch the menu button. The first menu is called the scene file menu, and this is where you make the changes to the imaging aspects, what, what you want the picture to look like, how you want to paint the picture. So there's a vast array of controls in here for the color and the gamma and the shading and all the things that you do to change what the image looks like. You also have the ability to set things like the variable frame rates or the dynamic range stretching or to go into the Vlog L logarithmic gamma mode. And these menu items are very complex. Panasonic has published a book I wrote and it's available for free download. So you definitely want to get your copy of that. And it goes into extensive detail, far more than we can go into in these videos. But one thing I really want to show you here is this second item here, the scene file menu in the scene file menu. So the scene file menu, scene file item, this is how you can load and save complete scene file settings. So if someone has created a profile or a scene file of how they want the camera to look, they can save that to a memory card and load it back in from a memory card. You can share these and Panasonic has a number of scene files available for download on their website. So if you don't necessarily have a lot of time to experiment with learning how all the functions work, maybe you want to try downloading some of these pre-created scene files and see if any of those suit your needs. Next menu we're looking at is the system mode. And this is general basic overall operations of the camera. So when you set it into whether it's gonna be in 59.94 Hertz or 50 Hertz for whether you're in an NTSC or PAL territory, this is also where you set what type of files you wanna record, whether it's MP4s or AVCHD or QuickTime movies. And this is where you also set what type of recording you're gonna make, whether it's ultra high definition or 4K or 720p AVC HD. These are all set in the system mode menu. The next menu up is user switch. This is for programming the user buttons. There are about 39 user button functions. So we're gonna address those in another video, but I'm just showing you here, when you get in this user switch, you have user one through eight. Those are the eight physical user buttons. And then you have nine through 12. Those are the four virtual buttons that show up on the LCD screen. And you program what function you want from this list of 39 separate functions. So these are very, very useful features. You're definitely gonna wanna learn how to use these. So see the user button video that we've created for more information. The next menu, SW setup. What? What in the world is SW setup? I, I like to think of it as switch setup because basically in this menu, this is where you can program how the various physical switches and controls and buttons act on the camera. So for example, the iris ring, the first menu item, you can configure it so that the iris ring closes the iris when you move the ring up or when you move the ring down. So you control how you prefer that physical feature to work. And this is where you'll program what settings you want on the gain switch and how you want the white balance switch to work and whether you want any of the positions on the white balance switch to go into automatic white balance. So how you control or program any of the buttons on the camera other than the user buttons is through the SW mode menu. Next menu is the auto SW. Again, I consider it the auto switch, and this is for the automatic and manual switch where you decide what functions you want the camera to take over when you move the switch to auto and those that you don't want it to take over. That all happens in the auto SW menu. Now there's many more menus you can see up here that we're only on page one of three. So I use the down arrow to get to the next page of menus and the first one up, recording setup. A lot of powerful features that are available here. This is how you configure how you want the two memory card slots to work, whether you want it to record simultaneously or one after the other, or to do a high res recording on one slot and a low res recording on the other. We talk about this more in detail in our dual codec functions video. This is also where you can configure how the pre-record or the time-lapse works, or if you're setting up a focus transition function, that's all controlled in this menu. There are a lot of features controlled by the recording setup menu, so you're definitely gonna wanna read the DVX200 book and learn how to use those functions. Next is audio setup. That's obviously how we control how the two XLR jacks work and the internal microphone, and whether you want to employ the limiter or not, or the low cut filter. Next menu is the output setup menu. 
that's easy to understand. That's basically the video and audio output ports. What they do, how you want them configured, whether you want to use the HDMI port or the SDI port, you can only have one active at a time, but you would set which one you want, and what type of signal it outputs. For example, you can be recording ultra high def in the camera, but have it down convert to high def or even standard def on the HDMI output if you wanted to. You make all those decisions here in the output setup menu. Next up is the display setup menu. And by display, we're talking about what goes on the LCD, what goes on the viewfinder. So things like the zebras, if you wanna configure what levels you want the zebras to trigger at, that happens in the display setup menu. Or if you want to change the level of color saturation or the, the peaking detail on the LCD or viewfinder, that happens in this menu. A few things I wanna point out to you. One is that you can choose to display the gain level in either terms of ISO or in decibels of gain. If you choose ISO, then it looks more like a film camera. It'll tell you you're, you're at ISO 1000 or whatever. If you choose decibels of gain, it'll show 1 dB, 2 dB, 3 dB. You have finer control if you set it in decibels of gain, but it may make more logical sense to use ISO if you're used to working that way. There's a setting for zoom and focus. I always set this to millimeters and feet. This is the readout on the lens. It'll tell you exactly what zoom position you're at and where it's focused at. So I like to have that set to millimeters and feet. And there's a number of displays. I normally turn these all on. So uh, lens status, card and battery, things like that. I normally turn them all on because if the viewfinder is getting too cluttered, you can just use the display mode check switch set that to off and it'll erase everything. You have a pristine display. When you set it back to on though, I like to be able to see all the information that the camera's telling me, so I normally set those all to on. Next up is other functions. And this menu is basically for functions that really didn't fit in any of the other categories. So they made a catch-all category, other functions. So this is a place where you're gonna format your memory cards. This is where you're gonna set the clock or time zone. This is where if you want to reinitialize the camera back to factory default, that's in the other functions menu. And the last menu is maintenance. And this is for functions like, you know, determining how many hours the camera has been on or what the current version of the firmware is. Or if you want to update the firmware, you come here and execute the update command. You definitely want to stay up to date in the firmware. There may be new features or bug fixes, things that are introduced that Panasonic will post on their website. Check back frequently and look and see if there's a firmware update. And if there is one, download it. And this is the menu you come to to install that. Okay, so that concludes our basic tour and overview of the DVX200 and its menus and buttons and switches and how the camera's organized and laid out. So hopefully you have a better grip on how to access the features that you're looking for. If you want more information on how those features and functions work, we have a number of resources for you. First, see the rest of the videos in this series where we discuss a number of different operations of the camera in more detail. Second, be sure to download your copy of the DVX200 book. It's a comprehensive resource that discusses every function and feature of the camera and it's available to you free on Panasonic's website. Thanks for watching and we hope that this will help you and empower you to get the best from your camera. Panasonic.